we want to find the area inside one leaf or one petal of the rows given by r equals four sine five theta, graphed here in blue. So we want to find the area of one petal, or the area of this shaded region here. To do this, we'll be using the formula r equals one half times the integral of r squared, integrated with respect to theta, from alpha to beta, where the interval from alpha to beta would trace out one petal of our rows. So the area of one petal is equal to one half times the integral of r squared, which would be four sine five theta squared, integrated with respect to theta from alpha to beta. To determine the limits of integration, we want to find the interval that would trace out one petal, and notice when theta equals zero, we'd have r equals four times sine zero, which would be four times zero or zero, which means when theta equals zero, we'd be at the pole here, which we'll use as the lower limit of integration. And now to find the upper limit of integration, we want to determine what's the next smallest positive value for theta, where r would be zero again. There's a couple of ways of doing this. One way would be to analyze the graph of r equals four sine five theta. The other way would be to set r equal to zero and solve theta. Let's show both methods. The horizontal axis would be theta, and the vertical axis would be r. Notice how the period would be two pi divided by five, which let's say would be here. So if we want to graph one period of our sine function here, we would divide this into four equal intervals. Here would be pi over five radians. Half of this would be pi over ten radians. And here we'd be at three pi divided by ten radians. Notice how the amplitude is positive four, so r has a maximum value of four, a minimum value of negative four. And now because we have the sine function at zero radians, it starts at the midline, which would be here, then here we'd be at a maximum of four, here we'd be at the midline, here we'd be at a minimum of negative four, here we'd be back at the midline. So the graph of r equals four sine five theta would look something like this. And again, notice that r is zero at zero radians. And notice how it returns back to zero at pi over five radians, which means the point would be back at the pole, and we would have traced out one petal of our rows. So pi over five radians is the upper limit of integration. And again, this petal is traced out from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over five radians. As we see here. Now the second method for determining our limits of integration would be to set r equal to zero and solve for theta. Let's also show that method. If we set r equal to zero, we'd have zero equals four sine five theta. If we divide both sides by four, we have zero equals sine five theta. Let's perform a substitution here, let x equal five theta. So the equation would now be zero equals sine x. We know we want to start at zero radians, so if we let x equals zero, notice how the next positive angle where sine x would be zero would be x equals pi radians. But x is really equal to five theta, so we'd have five theta equals zero, five theta equals pi. If we divide both sides by five, notice how we get theta equals zero and theta equals pi over five, which we already found graphically. This isn't the only possible interval, but this interval does trace out one petal, and therefore we can use this interval to find the area of one petal. And now let's evaluate this definite integral. Notice how if we square four sine five theta, we'd have 16. 16 times one half is eight. So let's write this as eight times integral of, we'd have sine squared five theta. Now from here, we'll perform a substitution for sine squared five theta, which is a power reducing formula given here below. And notice how if we have sine squared x here, on the right we have cosine two x, so the angle is doubled. So 
sine squared five theta is equal to one half times the quantity one minus cosine ten theta. And since eight times one half is four, you can write this as four times integral of the quantity one minus cosine ten theta. And now when we find the antiderivative, we have to be a little careful here. We have to perform u substitution to integrate cosine ten theta, where u would be ten theta, and therefore differential u equals ten d theta. So if we divide both sides by ten, notice how we have one tenth du equals d theta, which means we'll have an extra factor of one tenth when we integrate cosine ten theta. So we'd have four times the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would be theta, minus the antiderivative of cosine ten theta. Again, at the performing u substitution, we'd have one tenth sine ten theta. So when theta is equal to pi over five, we'd have pi over five minus one tenth times sine of ten times pi over five would be two pi. And then when theta is zero, we'd have zero minus one tenth times sine zero. So notice how sine two pi is zero, so this product is zero, this is zero, and sine zero is also zero. So the exact value, or the exact area, would be four times pi over five, or four pi divided by five, and this would be square units. Let's also get our decimal approximation on the graphing calculator. Four pi divided by five is approximately two point five one three three. And since we do have our graphing calculator, let's go and evaluate the original def integral to check our work. Before we do this though, let's check our mode. Notice how we are in radian mode. Notice how we're also in function mode. If we want to, we can change this to polar mode. It doesn't really matter except if we change the polar mode, the variable will be theta instead of x. Let's go ahead and change this to polar mode by pressing enter. And now we'll go back to the home screen. And now we'll enter point five for one half, and then math. We want option nine for function integration, which is here, enter. Now I do have a newer operating system. Notice how this looks like an integral. If you have an older version, it will look different. But in this case, I'm going to enter zero for the lower limit of integration, right arrow. Upper limit of integration is pi divided by five, right arrow. In parentheses, I'll enter four sine five theta squared. So open parenthesis, four sine five theta. Close parenthesis for the angle, close parenthesis and then squared. Right arrow, the variable we're using is theta, so enter theta and enter. And notice how this does verify that our work is correct. The area is approximately two point five one three three. I hope you found this helpful.